give her a big hand. Let's give her a big hand. Come on. Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you everyone for being online with us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We praise your holy name. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father, that you're here. Right in front of our faces. We're breathing his breath. Thank you, God, that we're able to enter into the awareness of your closeness, that the veil was torn so that our faces are right in front of your face, God. Nose to nose. Eskimo kisses. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, I'm going to call up a couple beautiful ladies who are going to have some words to share with you this evening. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your children and that they have this beautiful space to learn and grow, God, for you to refine them that they hear your voice, they're your sheep, God, and they know your voice. In the name of Jesus. All right, Krista, come on up, friend. Woo! Okay, so God usually gives me a certain name to be able to call out, so I have time to prepare, but I guess that's not really prophetic as preparing. So I've been praying, and I still don't have a name, so this is completely outside of my comfort zone. Um, but I feel um, led to ask if anybody has any lower back pain or any pain on their right side. Ooh, that's awkward. Okay, awesome. All right, so I'm going to pray for you. What's your name? Lisa? All right, so God, I come before you right now, God, and I pray that you would just touch Lisa's body, God, right now from head to toe, God. I pray that you would just line her body up back to where it's supposed to be, God. I pray for um, anything that's attached to her that's not of you has to go right now in Jesus' name, God. I command all pain to go in Jesus' name. For by your strife, she is healed. She's already healed, God. So I just stand that it will start manifesting in her body right now, God. No weapon formed against her shall prosper, God. I pray that any lie or attack the enemy has on her life is sorted and canceled right now in Jesus' name, God. I just thank you that your presence is in this place right now and that it's tangible, God. It's sick and that we can feel you, God. So I pray that you would physically just move on her body right now in Jesus' name. But look, there's more. Hi, Kevin. I love you, and I'm glad that you're here. And I just want to say that you walking through that door has broke generations before you and below you. That when God sees you, he doesn't see who you think you are, but he sees who he created and who he you to be. You are made whole in Jesus' name. All addiction is broke off of you in Jesus' name. The things that you have labeled yourself are a lie. That you are a child of God. You are called and you are created for a purpose. You have yeah. a destiny. You have an identity. And I claim that from this moment forward, that's what you are going to walk in. No more lies are attached to you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Sealed by his blood in Jesus' name. All right, Ingrid. Come on up and share. through me, Lord. It's not me, Lord. It's all of you, Lord. And I just thank you for that, God. I thank you that things are going to break off of not only me, but that fear is broken off of everyone in this room, Lord. Yes. Come on. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, for your spirit. I feel you, Lord. Yes. So powerful and so Come mighty, on. God. I thank yes. you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Woo! Amen. So, 
I've never really spoken in a, uh, in front of a group or you know a large group. Even in a small setting, I don't really like to speak up. So I know that this is the strength that people are working through me right now because usually I just like close my eyes and I'm like, oh my God, you know, I'm shaking, but I'm not. I just have the peace of the Lord. Thank you, hallelujah, praise the Lord. So I would like to say, I I spoke to well, Amber, um, asked me to give a prophetic word and um, I started to pray to the Lord and I said, Lord, you, it's only you through your spirit, God. I know that you're going to come through because Amber always has taught us that, you know, we are his sheep and that he is our shepherd and we can hear his voice. And so I'm hearing you, Lord. I'm hearing you loud and clear, God. So um, he gave me a word and the word is he wants to take us higher. He wants to take us higher through our sound our sound of music, our sound of our song that we have in our hearts for him, the praising and the worshiping and the thanksgiving and gratitude that we have in our hearts. And it's, all, it's our, the way that our heart is positioned and, and, and it's our posture of our heart that God, is, is, that God wants to see. And so as I sat in my bed asking the Lord to reveal his word to me, um, I ended up getting the, the word was else. And I was like, what is this, Lord? Like, what? And then he said, he, he showed me a vision of like the Appalachian Mountains. And then when I came in, I saw the mountain painting up there. And I was like, oh my God, what in the world? So then, um, uh, okay, so I was like shaking. And I was like, Amber, the mountain's right there. And then she's like, yep. Yeah. And so after I got Appalachian Mountains, so I just want us to do a prophetic act right now and just close our eyes just to... To, to, to feel like we're in at the Appalachian Mountains, like right now looking up at the mountains and how beautiful and majestic and how God made it and created it. It's, it's beautiful. It's just magnificent, his creation. Not only all creation, but how he created all of us. And so through that, um, he gave me another vision, which brought me to, um, I don't know if everybody's familiar with this movie, but it's, it's, it's called The Sound of Music. And with Julie Andrews, and when she's like, the hills are alive with the sound of music. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, Lord, um, where are you taking me with this? And then he said that through the hills, we are his hills. And, and when we make noise and we worship him, we come alive, just like the hills come alive with the sound of music, we come alive with the sound of music, the sound of music that's in our hearts for him. And it's just such a beautiful thing because God loves when we worship him. God loves when we posture our hearts for him. He wants us to just to go deeper. He wants to take us deeper. And so um, with that, he gave me a song, and I don't know if anybody knows it, but I would really like for you guys to look it up, and it's... Um, by Anna Golden, and the name is Take Me There. And um, I wrote down a little bit of what it says, and it says, Take me there, where your, where your peace and your love overflows, where my heart is set free from all shame and guilt, and chains are undone. I want to know what it feels like when heaven touches earth and I'm caught in between. I want to know what it feels like for the glory of the Lord to fall on me, so take me there, Lord. Yeah. Take all of us there, Lord. Yeah. Take us there to that place where angels never cease to cry, holy, 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 where the elders bow down and cast all their crowns down to, at your feet, Lord. So I just thank you, Lord. I believe that God's going to do mighty things for us. I believe that God has great things ahead for all of us with grateful hearts, with thanksgiving hearts. I just want to just shout a praise to the Lord right now. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Heavenly Father. I believe that he's going to renew our minds according to God's word. That's what it says. And I, am, I stand strong on his word. In Romans 12, 2, it says that, I, that our thoughts, when we think those thoughts and we come in alignment with his word, powerful things happen. So I just pray that we all continue to press in and continue to look forward to all the wonderful things that he has, all the unlimited and abundance of blessings that he has for us. In Jesus' name, amen.
doesn't know that she's a preacher yet. But Come on. Yes. She's going to she's going to preach. Yes, Lord. To the nation. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes. I thank you for that word, God. I thank you that your word manifests truth in our lives, God. That it bears witness to our spirits, God. That that seed that was just planted is watered and that we ourselves cause it to grow. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you're not distant. Ingrid uh, wrote that word, and it's actually pretty much everything I want to speak on tonight. And so I know that God is speaking to his children when he does things like that. He confirms his word through the ones who hear him, through his beautiful sheep. So I thank you, Father, for that confirmation. And uh, I was just really looking around and just throughout the week hearing things that have been happening, not even just the week, but the past months and um, people's lives and my life. And um, I was just meditating on the things that the body has been through, through like their own families, through circumstances, together, apart, solitaire, all the aspects of that and that um, I was feeling that sometimes in those situations that we feel like God is distant from us, like it's harder to experience him. It's harder to feel his tangible presence in some of those times because they're so full of angst and um, grief and disturbance there's a lot of trauma that's happening and and it's just like in those times it seems difficult to feel like you're experiencing him sensing his presence or um, it's almost like we feel like we have to work harder at it because there's all this junk in the way of us and God, as, it, as if he's in a separate place, as if he's way up there and we're way down here. But it's the times that we're on the mountain that it's like we can feel him and we can touch him and it's all roses and sunshine, right? And it's so easy to experience him and feel good and like he's fully accessible to us when life is good. And it's just a feeling, though, is the thing, is that it's not even truth. But we, for some reason, in our human nature, have the ability to enter into our feelings so much easier than we actually enter into truth and enter into his presence and enter into the knowledge and understanding of him and so we get to like fight but it sometimes it just feels like this huge huge battle to connect with him and i've been seeing this like i've been seeing my brothers and sisters struggling like even when we come into worship like it might take them all the way till the end and they finally get there and like pastor says it it needs to become like effortless just in entering in not even when we enter the room but before we get here living a lifestyle of it of hallowed be your name god and when we praise his name, his kingdom fully manifests in our lives no matter what's going on. And that's such a revelation in that when we, when we sing, when we say, when we speak, holy is your name, his kingdom manifests instantly, instantly in any circumstance in our life, in, in the times of death despair, sickness, fear, violence, any of life's circumstances, 
anything that has great uncertainty in it that can cause you to feel shaken or moved by those circumstances, broken homes, shattered communities. We look around us and just like overdoses and addiction and broken homes, fatherless homes, children just doing things to destroy their lives. And it's so easy to just feel like we're apart from God and that he's not near to us. And as the circumstances increase, we tend to go deeper and deeper in this place of feeling the effects. And uh, it's almost as if we surrender ourselves to those feelings. But God's desire is his ways and his effects. And his effects are not of this world and they're not of the flesh. They're not our own ways. It's his ways which are higher. And he has an actual effect that supersedes any feeling we might have. And as we look through God's word, God's own people in, in the Old Testament actually felt the same way. So we're not alone. We're not the first people to do these kind of things, to feel feelings and be in them and act from them and behave according to our feelings and just to, I mean, if you look at David, um, he oftentimes got really depressed and and upset. Although he, he talked to God about it, it was like, wow. You're really down in the dumps, buddy, you know? And he, he was. And it, a lot of times we just feel really sorry for him as we we're reading about his life. And so God's own people, a man after his own heart, a man after his own heart. I mean, if you can imagine the one that God said, you are the man after my own heart, all up in his feelings, and just surrendering to him, and just being so miserable, and so woe is me, and so he was even afraid of like what was coming at him at times. He even entered into fear. He even entered into despair and grief, and all those things that we do. So we're not alone, so there's no guilt, shame, or condemnation here. But God reveals himself in the word, his word, which is so beautiful. It's truth, and it's life. It's so good. You're so good, God. I thank you for your word, and thank you for this word, God. Oh, God, we thank you for your word. That every time we turn to it, God, you are revealed through it, God. And so when we're looking at God's own people behaving from these places where they're led by their feelings, it it gets really relatable and... The prophet Isaiah is experiencing some of the same things, but in a different time and in a different way that we're experiencing things. How he was experiencing in Jerusalem the state of destruction it was in, the state of despair it was in. It was torn apart by war. It was under foreign occupation. It was just invaded. And if we look at life around us, there's invaders here. They come and kill our children. They come and take the lives of God's people who are supposed to preach the gospel and set the captives free. 
The invaders come and they break up homes and make fatherless generations. The invaders come and infiltrate our cities, right? And there's war. There's war all around us, just like there was in Jerusalem. And Isaiah is experiencing this and looking all around and seeing all this. And he's seeing all the destruction that these foreign occupants are creating in his land. And it's the same thing we experience today in our own land, not only in our city, but in our homes, but in our lives. When any of those things come and there's grief or trauma or death or destruction, it's the same effects of what was happening in Jerusalem what Isaiah was witnessing. But then we take a look at what Isaiah does with that. Isaiah, he encourages his people to do something in the midst of that. And what does he encourage them to do? And I'm going to go to Isaiah 52, 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Our God reigns. In this city, our God reigns. Our watchmen lift up their voices With their voices, they shall sing together. Sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. Break forth into joy. Sing together. You waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Hallelujah. So he is encouraging his people to sing, to sing. They're singing for the promises to come that the Lord will redeem the land, that God will rebuild the ruined cities and the former desolations. And when you sing, you're singing unto the Lord, and you're in his will, that no matter what kind of death or destruction is going on around you, you sing unto the Lord. You sing unto the Lord, and that's in his will. How do we know it's in his will? 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances. All. God's word is so definite. There, I have a hard time finding variables in it. I never read give thanks in some circumstances. I never read give thanks in circumstances that are convenient for you. He says all. That means every circumstance. And if we think of every circumstance that could possibly happen in our lives, some of it's really horrible. And he's telling us to give thanks, even in that place, to have a thankful heart. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. A thankful spirit is his will. In joy, in sorrow, in prosperity, in adversity, whatever it may be, you give thanks. In Christ Jesus, that's the sphere of God's display, the greatest display, Christ Jesus. That's the realm in which the full manifestation of God's glory and goodness and kindness and peace in Christ Jesus. That's the realm 
that we enter into. We give thanks. Psalm 34, 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. All. His praise will always be on my lips. And the way the Lord had me hear that is his praise will in all ways be on my lips in every way in pain and sorrow in happiness excitement whatever way i am his praise will always be on my lips amen ephesians 5:20 always give thanks to god the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All ways, in all ways, give thanks in every way you possibly can. These things really challenge us in a way because in our feelings and in our own understanding, it's hard to understand when maybe somebody close to you, somebody you loved very much has just passed away and you don't understand it, like, how, how do you enter into praising the Lord? How do you do that? When you've just lost your job or your home, how, how do you praise the Lord? How do we, in our human nature, enter into praising the lord this this is where this is where we have to lean on his understanding and let ours go we just have to surrender it and just step into it in faith because even if we don't feel like it in faith as we enter into his will what he says and knowing what he says is truth, we get to step into that no matter how we're feeling and enter into that place of praising the Lord in every circumstance. And as we begin to do that, no matter what's happening, no matter where we're at, no matter what death or destruction or trauma around us is happening, if we begin to enter into praising the Lord, the awareness of his presence is great. Fully manifest in those moments where it used to be so far away from us, where we would have to work to get to it, where it felt like a struggle or a hurdle. If we don't want to feel alone and desolate in hard times, which makes it feel worse, if we don't want to feel separated from God when we're going through trials and tribulations, painful times, and then on top of it, we're like, where are you, God? Because I don't feel you. Where are you? Well, there's a little something called personal responsibility in everything. And no matter what's happening in our life, if we take that responsibility of lining ourselves up with his word and his truth, and he tells us right here what his will is for us, that we begin to thank him for the things we do have, for what he's doing that we cannot see, that we don't understand what he's doing now, but his word says it will be revealed to us later and we'll know that it was a good thing. Death is never a good thing, but what he does through that is glorious. And your spirit begins to bear witness to those things and you begin to understand like your father understands. You begin to have the mind of Christ. You begin to see how he sees. We weren't promised a life free of those things, but we were promised that he would never leave us and he would never forsake us. 
But because we go through those things, we do feel like he's left us and he has forsaken us. And the Lord was just wanting this word tonight because he wants to solidify the truth that he hasn't left us and he hasn't forsaken us. But if we do these things according to his word, we will also understand that he has not left us nor forsaken us in any of those times. Those times that were out of our control and those times that we perpetuated ourselves. No matter what happened, he never left us. He was always there. We just were not in his will of giving him thanks, giving him praise for keeping us, for holding us in his right hand, for being the wall of fire around us and the glory in the midst of us, no matter what is happening in our lives. So his presence is always with us. It's up to us to be able to experience that. It is us who hinders that. Us. It's our fault. We do that. We do. And it's frustrating. We frustrate our own selves. It's just, that's the way it is. And so, if we repent, if we return from that way, he will heal us. If we return from from every wicked way. And the wicked ways are ways that are not of God. All across the board. When you hear that, the wicked ways, our minds go to murder and, you know, all those up here things that we kind of gauge. No. A wicked way is a way that's not of the Lord. And that wicked way is not praising the Lord and not giving him thanks in every circumstance we have. But if we turn from that and go in the opposite direction, his kingdom is right there. And his kingdom will be what you experience in those times. It's actually simple and we make it hard. It's actually very, very simple, and we make it very, very hard. God is not hard. We are. Life is not hard. We are. We're very hard. We're like pushing a rope most of the time. We don't budge. We, it's, and the Lord knows we're like that, but he, he makes it so cut and dry, actually very easy to understand, and it's a choice. You get one of two things here. There's no gray area. You either give thanks in all circumstances, and that is his will, or you don't. And when you're in his will, you experience the things of him. When you're not, you have a hard time. And then those things that are destructive and harmful and hurt and all those ways of the world, they begin to consume you. So if you want the kingdom of heaven and all it has to offer, the full manifestation of his presence, the goodness, the joy and tribulation, the peace to peace in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of all these worldly things, the peace of the Lord where you can't be moved. You just line yourself up and you do his will. You thank him and you praise him. As you enter 
into that in faith. You begin to grow in that area. You begin to just thank him no matter what's coming at you. And your life actually, get this, feels better no matter what's happening. Now all of a sudden your feelings begin to line up with his truth. Amen. Thank you, God, for your truth. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, that we get to sing. We get to sing in the midst of all this destruction. We get to praise your holy name. And we're lifted high up to those mountains, God. When everything is a valley around us, God, we get lifted high up to the mountain, the mountain of the Lord. And we get to remain there with you, God. Your word says so. We get to remain in that place with you, God. I thank you for your word tonight, God. I thank you, God, that you've given us the ability to hear and to know and to bear witness to your truth and then to act on it, God, to line ourselves up with that, the plumb line to heaven, that we get to turn away, we get to repent, we get to turn away from the direction we were going, God, and turn back to where your kingdom resides, right here, in front of us, God. It's at our hands. We can touch it, God. We can feel it, God. You're a God who interacts with his children and gives these beautiful gifts that we can actually experience, God. We get to experience the gifts that you give your children, God. I thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, amen. So now we're going to activate some things tonight because he likes to do that with his children. And so I want you to get together, maybe with some people you don't know, and I want you to share with the other person or the people in your group five things that you're thankful for in your life. And I want everybody in that group to join in in thanking God for everything. So there should be a lot of gratitude, a lot of praising, and a lot of joy happening in the next 10 minutes. Amen.